The following is a CUNY TV special presentation. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is the first of a five-part city talk series on immigration, the paramount domestic issue facing the United States today. The discussion around immigration tells us much about who we are as a nation and who we want to be. Today's subject, citizenship, will be followed by conversations on domestic violence, family immigration, education, and federal and state legislation. These shows will run from April 30th through May 4th, and they will coincide with the fifth annual Daily News CUNY Citizenship Now call-in. Joining me as co-host, guest, and commentator for this series is Alan Wernick, a professor of law at Baruch College and chair of CUNY Citizen and Immigration Project. Alan's column, Immigration Advice, appears in the Daily News twice a week. Alan is also the author of U.S. Immigration and Citizenship, Your Complete Guide. It's now in its fourth edition. Our first guest today is Afonso Aguilar, Chief of the Office of Citizenship of the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services of the Department of Homeland Security. We will then talk with Guillermo Linares, Commissioner of the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs, and Yolanda Aspina, a recently naturalized American who was helped by the CUNY Citizenship and Immigration Project. Welcome, Alan. Welcome, Thank Chief Aguilar. Thank you so much. Glad to be with you. Talk about this new exam. Uh, there are some folks out there who are suspicious of it. I know Alan's suspicious of it. Why are you suspicious of it? Well, and then and, and let's have the chief see if he can assuage those suspicions. Well, I think it's like sort of this old saying, you know, it's not fixed, if it's not broken, don't fix it. It seems to me that the current exam we have is, uh, is working. And I think my big concern is, is that uh, applicants will find it more difficult. And I think. You know, there's a whole sense. I mean, you hear politicians sometimes say, why don't these people become citizens? Why don't they become citizens? And so we want to make, I think citizenship is good for permanent residents. I think I'd like to make it as easy as possible. And I guess I'm concerned having, you know, compared the two tests that it may become maybe a little bit more difficult, the, the newer test, right. the proposed well, test. I mean, look, I'll, I'll, those concerns are valid. But honestly, there's nothing to worry about. Because uh, first, let me say that I think we have a difference of opinion. The current test is broken, and, and it's broken because of the content. I mean, you would have to agree with me that the content of that test is based on random trivia. It doesn't follow a basic civics curriculum. Uh, it's insulting to average Americans. It's insulting to citizenship applicants. We want to have a test that has meaningful content, that is concept-based, that it covers U.S. history, the basics of, of, of our system of government, rights and responsibilities. A better test, not a harder test. We have started piloting the new test. You know, we released the new questions mm -hmm. uh, for the test. And you're piloting in ten cities. In ten different cities. And Albany, I guess, is the and it's, it's, to it's us. one of them, exactly. But let me tell you, we are going to continue with the format that we're going to provide the candidate with the questions and answers. So obviously, our goal is not to make it harder. Uh, you have to understand that we're developing the current naturalization exam in the context of. U.S. naturalization policy. Our naturalization policy is non-punitive. If you're a permanent resident and you meet the requirements of the law, then you should become a citizen. Today, most people that uh, apply for citizenship pass the naturalization exam. The pass rate is about 94 percent. We're piloting right now. We're halfway through. But it's a volunteer. I mean, it's right? a volunteer. So, has there been any testing? Mean, has, has there been any testing separate and apart from the from this pilot, which is volunteer? Yes. Sort of random testing. Yes. And is yes. the pass rate the same, pretty a much? Absolutely. Well, that's uh, interesting. I mean, because we wanted to get a representative sample of of the universe of citizenship applicants, right. and obviously, if you have a volunteer pilot, those who already speak English and are more educated mm -hmm. will take it. So, we have gone to adult education sites. It's a complementary study to go to those who are uh, low income, not mm -hmm. educated, uh, and, 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 and try the new test. And honestly, we're halfway through, and it's very interesting, the pass rate on the first attempt 
is higher than the pass rate on the first attempt for the current exam. Is the first high? attempt is 84% right now. People pass the second attempt, 96%. So honestly, our message is it's more meaningful, better exam, better content, but not harder. Mm -hmm. But with that explanation, I, I, and, and that's why I, I'm trying very hard to go to immigrant communities to explain to them, uh, to make this point, because unfortunately there's a lot of discussion out there. A lot of people saying, oh, you're creating a new barrier for citizenship, you want to filter people from citizenship. What would we gain as a country? Not even from a naturalization perspective, but from a homeland security perspective. If we reject a substantial amount of citizenship applicants uh, from citizenship, uh, will we create a community of disaffected immigrants rejected from citizenship? That's not in our best interest. Our country was based on the concept of universal citizenship. So if you pass the test, you should become a citizen, and, you meet, and if you meet the other requirements. The other thing is, the point of the test is not testing per se. It's requiring people to study. If you study, you should pass. So your goal is to, uh, uh, on your fact sheet, it yeah. says, the meaningful test will encourage, quote, civic learning and patriotism among prospective citizens. What's civic learning and what's patriotism in this context? Right. Uh, patriotism is, is not nationalism. It's a healthy love for the political community, for the political institutions. The great thing about America is America is an ideal. America is not based on race, uh, religion, uh, ethnicity. It's based on those on civic ideals and a shared sense of history that leads to a sense of belonging. Uh, so we have to make sure that those who become citizens do have a loyalty and an attachment to the country and feel part of the political community. We, the president's been talking about promoting patriotic assimilation. Um, that doesn't mean that we want somebody to become uh, ethnically uh, Anglo or Protestant. Culturally, in the United States, you are what you are. I give my example. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. My mother's Italian. My father's from Costa Rica. We speak Spanish at home. We eat rice and beans every day, and we enjoy it. It's part of our culture. You know, we're practicing Catholics. We're proud of that. But politically, we're all American. And the three elements are common language, civic learning, which means understanding our democracy, which requires participation, rights and responsibilities that come with citizenship, and a shared sense of history. Now, shared sense of history doesn't mean that you agree with everything that has happened in history, but it's the common experience that allows us to develop a sense of belonging. In America, we, we've been successful in incorporating people. Ronald Reagan used to say, you can go to Germany, you can go to Italy, live there for 20 years, never become German or Italian. Great thing about America, anyone can come from any corner of the world, identify with those civic values, and become fully American. So and we if, have to strengthen those efforts. If, if, if the government's interest and concern is encouraging people to become citizens, as you mentioned, how come the fees are going up so high for citizenship when they're going up? You know, because right now, if you're including the fingerprint fee, it's about it's four hundred dollars to become a citizen, right? Right. right. And with the uh, biometric fingerprint fee and the application fee, it's going to go up right. to what six hundred and seventy-five dollars. So right. that's a substantial increase. And I know that it's not. Uh, I know it's not your agency's decision uh, in terms of what certain you know uh, legislative mandates are. Uh, right. But nonetheless, there is some decision within uh, your agency as to what fees go up and what fees don't. For instance, among the various fees that we have uh, for different kinds of services. So, and I don't hear the and I don't hear the and, and, and I don't hear the administration advo uh, advocating about that. I mean, I've heard some people in the administration say, "Well, it's a, a legislative problem," but I don't see but, any but, advocacy but, but in the legislative but, branch. Let, let's be honest about this issue because there, there's a lot of uh, talk about this issue. Uh, this is not a Bush administration issue. Uh, remember the first uh, increase in 98 under the Clinton administration? How much did it cost to become a citizen? $98, $95. It went up to what? $210. I hope that the advocacy community at that time was as critical as they are. I think they were. I, they mean, are. Yeah, I don't think, it, I don't but, think but it's but an the attack point on the Bush is, administration is The point is that there's a consensus in Congress among Republicans and Democrats that the agency should be fee-based. We're a fee-based agency. What do you think about that? Ninety-nine percent. Let me say. Okay. F first Let of all, in terms of why the fee increase, yes, okay. we need a free increase because, just like any business, to manage an operation, 
to keep processing times under six months, to improve our IT. We need to improve IT in the agency, become much more effective, mm -hmm. improve customer service. We certainly Absolutely. need to improve customer service. You need to generate revenue. That's why in, every two years, fees have gone up, traditionally in the past 10 years, in the Democratic administration and Republican administration. And in Congress, there's no political will among Republicans or Democrats to give USCIS an appropriation. I think there's a decision among policymakers, the represented, the elected representatives of the American people, that those who come to this country should invest in the benefit that they're trying to get. I know it is difficult for many families, for many low-income families, uh, but uh, that's the situation we have right now. Now, uh, honestly, it would be very, how, how, how much money would you need to, we have the largest immigration system in the world. So, uh, honestly, with all the different budget constraints that we have, all the different priorities that we have, it's just very difficult to assign and appropriate enough money for immigration services to do its work. So, honestly, I think there's a consensus that fees work. Again, recognizing that it's difficult, uh, but, you know, there are some fee waivers for uh, low-income immigrants if they really can't pay. Mm -hmm. Suppose if you had enough money from the government to do what you would want to do, your agenda, your personal agenda, where might this money be spent? What are the areas that need further funding, more personnel, greater thinking? Where do we move? Well, I, I, I think, you know, in terms of processing, we've gone very far. I mean, there, we are... Uh, there's a revolution now in immigration services. We have uh, eliminated backlogs across the country. Uh, the average for, for processing applications is under six months. Imagine six months, the time you apply for citizenship, the time you, you swear as a new citizen. Uh, new York has been one of the challenging districts because of the, of the workload. Mm -hmm. But we have made incredible strides in terms of citizenship. We're already down to six months. Status adjustments, I don't have the numbers right now. But I, I think it's definitely under uh, less than a year and it's a half. Moving down, it's moving down. In, in, and, and there have been great strides here. And actually, but, it's, but where do you going go to, further? Going to the private, it's IT. We need to, and, and to have to know, absolutely. We should work like a credit card company, that if you have an issue with your application, you should be able to call a number or go online and see exactly what's happening with your case. In multiple languages. Exactly. That we don't have right now. We have old technology. We need to improve IT. Secondly, national security. It's fundamental. After 9-11, it's a difficult balance of continuing to be a welcoming nation and at the same time protecting our homeland. So we have to make sure that we give the right benefit to the right person. National security is fundamental. Uh, and then finally, I would say uh, promoting uh, and using the immigration process to encourage integration and patriotism. Uh, it's not only about the test. We also want to reach out to permanent residents because when you think about it, after five years generally, right. you Ready, ready to apply for citizenship, you have time to, 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 to you've, had time, you've had time to learn English, learn about the country. We want to reach out to immigrants as soon as they arrive as permanent residents okay. to encourage them to become part of the country. So I think it's very important for us, uh, and I commend the work that, that, uh, that you're doing with, 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 with um, uh, Citizenship Corps, and I definitely want to learn more about it, because I think that's exactly the type of thing that we should do at the national level. President Bush has expanded his vision on immigration reform and has included assimilation as a fundamental component. It's not enough to talk about visas, where you're going to have a guest worker program or early legalization. Once they're here, what are we doing to help them settle in the country? And I think that we need to look at assimilation and dedicate some funding uh, to fund community organizations faith-based organization and initiatives across the country to help immigrants integrate. Thank you. Any last words, Alan? Uh, just that um, uh, people people should know that the fees are uh, likely to go up in mid-June, that the ex there will be a new exam and we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, whether it, it's harder or not. So now's a very good time for people to apply for citizenship. And uh, uh, we have a uh, call in now at the uh, New York Daily News where people can call. If you look at the numbers on the bottom of your screen, people will be able to see numbers they can call. Uh, and for more information, they can go to uh, our website, which is uh, cuny.edu citizenship now, where we have continuing information about uh, citizenship and other immigration issues.
issues. And uh, finally, I want to say that one of the ways that we've been able to uh, work with the uh, USCIS in New York is by providing our college campuses for swearing-in ceremonies, which we do quite regularly. All of our campuses have auditoriums, and I think what I've heard from the local people is that that's one of the reasons we've been able to help help you speed up the process is just providing the space for the work right. to be done. And it's been a very uh, right. great collaborative right. relationship. And, Thank you. and I should add one last thing. We are going to finish the new test by this summer, but it doesn't mean we're going to start administering the test right away. We're going to give one year to community organizations, to people that help immigrants prepare for the citizenship exam, to prepare for the new exam. So summer of 08, we'll start administering the new exam. So Alan, you'll have time to work on the fifth edition of your book, Thank which you. I'm sure will be very <laughs> successful. Thank you, Chief Aguilar. Thank you, Alan. We'll be back in a moment. Hi, I'm Matthew Goldstein, the Chancellor of the City University of New York. Look who's teaching at CUNY. Michio Kaku, string field theorist and international authority on theoretical physics. John Corleano, Academy Award and Pulitzer Prize winner in music. David Nassau, winner, Bancroft Prize for Best Biography. Jill Barganetti, Presidential Early Career Award for Scientists and Engineers. Gregory Rabassa, recipient the National Medal of Arts in 2006 from President Bush. Elizabeth Nunez, winner, American Book Award. Godfrey Gums, American Physical Society Fellow and member, New York Academy of Sciences. World-class talent, award-winning scholars, CUNY is their classroom, CUNY is your university. Welcome back to the first of a five-part City Talk series on immigration. Our guests are Guillermo Linares, Commissioner of the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs, and Yolanda Ospina, a recently naturalized American who was helped by the CUNY Citizenship and Immigration Project. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner, Dr. Linares, you're an immigrant. You became a citizen. You're a piece of history. You're the first Dominican-American elected to public office in the United States. You're sort of the archetype of the immigrant success story. Talk about what citizenship meant to you, how you wanted it, how you got it, and the day you got it. And we'll um, talk to you about the science. Uh, I became a citizen in the summer of uh, 1972. Uh, I was in my second year in college. Uh, by then, I had already worked in a bodega, in a supermarket, and driven a, I was driving a taxi while I was paying my way through school at City College. And uh, being the oldest of nine children, uh, I always worked and went to school. And I knew early on that I wanted to uh, stay here in the United States, uh, that I embraced my family, my parents were undocumented, got their green card and petitioned us to come here. And uh, when I became a citizen, it was uh, basically an embrace uh, of this country to say, we, we want you to succeed here. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there I became a teacher and, and the rest was involving myself with the community. I felt that the way to pay back to what this country has given me was to serve helping other immigrants uh, like me uh, to succeed here uh, in fulfilling their American dream. Mm -hmm. And I have the greatest job that this Mayor Bloomberg has offered me. Well, uh, you, you, you did though that work both as a city council member from 1991 to 2001, and since August of 2004, you have been the commissioner of this agency. Yolanda, yes. you've recently been naturalized. Yes. Talk about the process that led you to naturalization and talk about what you had to do to get to what, what was it, February 6, 2007. Okay, um, the process was very fast, you know, because it's only uh, four months. Um, what they, the papers and the CUNY um, and at your college 
has an office for the immigration with Maggi. She's a very nice person, and she explained very easy what is the question, what is the good answer for that, and prepared everything, the papers, and everything was good. You know, so, uh, she helped me a lot in many ways. Um, and for example, in the, my test, she gives me the papers in Spanish and in English, and she explained to me, you, um, I had to be very quiet, very um, no excited for the answers because, yeah, you know, That's because, good advice, yes. yeah, no, she paid a lot of attention for any person um, go to this office, and she explained very, very good. This is a very, very good office. I am very, um, how I say, very. Um, Thank you for that because That's everything was college, good right? at your college. Your college yeah. Right. How I, did you find out about the? Uh, now, how I found, found out about the activity? Uh, how? At oh, okay. Because I am a student at your college, you oh, know. Okay. Yeah. See, it's easy to see, and you go inside, and you see the big signs. So it's easy. One day, I see. Oh, I see. What happened here? I asked what happened with my papers because I know not everybody knows about uh, what is the good papers because sometimes the papers are not good. So you back with everything. So I asked Margie. Margie was very, very attentive with me and explained everything. And now I am a citizen. And, 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 and you took the old test that we had just talked with Chief Aguilar yeah. about. What was it like taking the test? How did you study for this oh, test? Oh, you know, imagine. No, this was a um, beautiful thing because and the first time I feel very, very sad, very nervous because I say, oh my God, what happened? Here? I don't understand the question for the good, the good answer. But the lady that attended me in the immigration office, she was very polite and very nice with me. So I asked, and she asked the question, regular question, and uh, slow, slow, take me for the test. So it was easy with the time, the test. I am very quiet, so all my answer was good. So right. it was very nice, you know. After that, I say, my God, I feel, you know, imagine, very, very happy. Nobody imagine. I don't know for other people, but for me, what the best, I don't know, is for my age, or I don't know, but I feel very happy for that. So you are a citizen story, for huh? two months, and you're extremely happy. Yeah, because... She loved what you guys did. Well, we have, you know, we have these centers all over the city, and and uh, we have a uh, we have a, a terrific staff, right? Very smart, very well trained, and very courteous. I'm glad that you had such a good experience there. Yeah, no, you had a very good office and very um, good people that help us a lot. Of. We need immigrants. Uh, uh, we need because it's free. You know, pay anything. Hundred percent free, right? Yeah, Not even for the photographs. You know, pay anything, Nothing. and everything is good. Good. Yeah, see? yeah. And, right, and, you, and just, you didn't even pay her, and she just came on. That's right. She yeah. volunteered. Commissioner, tell us what the mayor's office of immigrant affairs does, what it's doing, and proactively, what is it doing? I know you folks have relationships. Your office and uh, CUNY has the CUNY Citizenship Court. Talk to us about what your office does. <laughs> the the Office of Immigrant Affairs, Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs, uh, is charged to serve as a bridge between city government and all its services uh, that are provided in immigrant communities. And what that means is that uh, my office and the team that I uh, work with uh, as part of the Mayor's Office works very closely uh, with uh, key agencies and commissioners uh, that serve New Yorkers to make sure that uh, the services they provide take into account that three million, approximately three million New Yorkers uh, mm -hmm. are immigrants, that is they're born outside the United States and uh, that we want uh, uh, immigrant communities to know that uh, they can access, regardless of their immigration status, mm -hmm. because we have half a million New Yorkers who are undocumented, mm -hmm. that uh, regardless of their status, they can access uh, services. And that's why 311, which is now the direct line to mm -hmm. access government uh, services, is equipped with 170 languages so that you, if mm -hmm. while you, you're learning
learning English, uh, twenty five percent of all New Yorkers are limited in English. Mm -hmm. uh, you you can access city government, and so. We want to be sure that uh, immigrants uh, know that uh, uh, whatever New Yorkers get uh, and they're entitled to, they are also entitled. Why? Because this city is a city of immigrants. This city was built by uh, mm -hmm. uh, immigrants uh, throughout its history, and 43 percent mm -hmm. of all uh, in, uh, New Yorkers uh, that are part of the workforce uh, are immigrants, and and so uh, we are now more immigrant than ever in its history, and that's why I'm privileged uh, as an immigrant uh, to serve under the leadership of Mayor Bloomberg, who understands the value that uh, immigrants bring to this city and this country, and he he wants uh, immigrants to succeed because if they do, then New York City is stronger. Uh, its economy is uh, uh, more robust, uh, and I think that we want uh, the children of immigrants and immigrant families as new New Yorkers to be successful in fulfilling their American dream. And we see success here, we yes. see success coming out of your operation, uh -huh. and we see, see success coming out of your operation. I th as, as, a, as a third generation immigrant and a resident of New Jersey. I thank you, New Yorkers, for providing what you do for those of us who are still arriving. Thank you. Please join us tomorrow for part two of this five-part City Talk series on immigration. Alan and I will be talking with Commissioner Yolanda Jimenez of the Mayor's Office to Combat Domestic Violence and Julie Dinnerstein from the Sanctuary for Families at the Brooklyn Family Justice System.